Focus is Caribbean News Desk. I'm Dennis Chabrol. First to headlines. Britain says international mediation on Guyana's political impasse, a last resort. Bulgarian suspected money launderer who traveled to Jamaica held in Guyana with a huge chunk of cash. And obesity high among Trinidad and Tobago primary schools. Details coming up. One Caribbean, one people, one nation. Britain believes that Guyana should try to resolve its own political impasse before seeking external assistance, while the combined opposition has largely resisted calls by the President Donald Ramatar administration for talks on major issues that triggered the no-confidence motion and the subsequent suspension of Parliament. The Alliance for Change, or AFC, believes that there is room for international mediation. AFC Chairman Nigel Hughes floated the idea at a weekend rally organized by the major opposition of Partnership for National Unity. The Alliance for Change is further calling on the international community to come to the assistance of Guyana by engaging all parties, civil society, in a formal structured dialogue on the restoration of normality in the governance of this country, which means the immediate reconvening of Parliament. This is the best that can be achieved by our international partners, assisting by hosting mediation sessions with all stakeholders at the table in an effort to arrive at an acceptable and credible way forward out of this crisis by restoring the National Assembly. But British High Commissioner to Guyana, Andrew Eyre, stressed that Parliament should reset swiftly and get on with the business of running the country. The envoy prefers Guyanese rather than the international mediators to find solutions to the political problems facing the country. My, my view on that is straightforward. You know, this is a Guyanese problem. It needs a Guyanese solution. So time must be given for all stakeholders in Guyana to, to craft that solution themselves. However, if international mediation or a role for the international community, however you want to call it, is something that all parties would think is useful, then of course we would be happy to assist. I think there's also a very important uh, other angle there that perhaps doesn't often get out into the public domain. You know, the Commonwealth Charter and what it calls on its member states you know, is quite specific. You know, the role of democracy, the role of parliament, local elections, national elections. You know, these things are central to the Commonwealth Charter. I think it's very important that Ghana fulfills those requirements. The president has said that he would call elections if there are no talks or fruitless discussions with the opposition. The voters' list is currently valid until January 31, 2015. The opposition parties had wanted to pass a no-confidence motion because of the president's refusal to assent laws that have been approved by the opposition, alleged unauthorized spending of monies from the Consolidated Fund, and the ignoring of opposition-approved parliamentary motions on a range of national issues. Guyanese authorities say they have seized a large sum of foreign currency from a Bulgarian man under the anti-money laundering and the countering of financing terrorism legislation. Agents of Guyana's Special Organized Crime Unit of the Police Force said that they seized 45,630 U.S. dollars and 740 euros that were in a suitcase allegedly belonging to the Bulgarian. Head of the Special Organized Crime Unit, Assistant Police Commissioner Sidney James, says... The man was returning to Guyana from Jamaica when he was detained and the cash allegedly found in his suitcase. He says investigators had been informed that a Bulgarian might have been involved in an automatic telemachine fraud. While the man was allowed to leave Guyana on October 30, one day after his arrival, Mr. James says the money has been held through a high court order. The money was detained and we did apply through the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions for uh, through an ex parte application for detention order to detain the money pending for the investigation. The detention order was approved by the Chief Justice and we have 90 days from Wednesday the 29th of October to 
establish whether um, the money is detained or the proceeds are crime. And where is he? He um, left the jurisdiction the next day. Oh, was he allowed to do that? Yes, we, 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 kept, we, we cannot arrest. He, um, the monies was detained. He had the option of staying until the proceedings were. Mr. James says the man had flown from Bulgaria to Jamaica through Spain, Brazil, and Guyana. He was held on his return from Jamaica. Police in Grand Bahama are investigating a major drug seizure that has left three Grand Bahamian males in custody. Bahamian police say that about 5 o'clock Sunday morning, Officers of the Drug Enforcement Unit, acting on information and armed with a search warrant, proceeded to a residence in the Arden Forest. Investigators say that there they discovered 113 crocus bags of suspected marijuana and a suitcase of suspected marijuana hash oil. Three Grand Bahamians were arrested and taken into police custody. Police say the marijuana weighed more than 5,600 pounds and its estimated street value is 5.6 million U.S. dollars. The estimated weight of the suspected hash oil is 67.5 pounds, and its street value is estimated at $607,500. Back in September, Bahamian police seized $570,000 worth of marijuana, a north of seizure of marijuana worth $118,000 was made in March 27. Russia has closed a deal with Venezuela to purchase 1.6 million tons of oil and 9 tons of petroleum derivatives from the Latin American country over the next five years. The agreement was between Russia's government-owned Rosneft Oil Company and its Venezuelan counterpart Pedevisa. Present at Monday's signing ceremony was Venezuelan Foreign Minister Rafael Ramirez, who arrived last Saturday in Moscow for negotiations with Rosneft CEO Igor Sechin regarding the falling price of oil. This is a second contract signed between the two companies to provide Russia with Venezuelan oil. The first dates from May 2014, covering the same period of time, and in it Russia agreed to purchase 1.6 million tons of oil in addition to 7.5 million tons of derivatives. Rosneft received 375,000 tons of oil derivatives under the first agreement, which obliged Russia to pay two, a 2 million U.S. dollar deposit. Rosnet and PDVSA are operating together in five oil extraction projects in Venezuela, a country with reserves estimated at 20.5 million tons of oil. During the visit of Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro to Russia last July, the two state-owned companies signed a cooperation agreement for carrying out joint projects in the Latin American country. The proportion of Trinidad and Tobago primary school students who are obese or overweight has doubled in the past decade. Health Minister Ford Khan says that the ministry collected data on the body mass index of 5,305 students in 27 primary and 14 secondary schools. The study revealed that 24% of children between ages 5 and 8 were obese or overweight, while only 14% were classed as thin. A similar project conducted in 1999 found that 11% of primary students were obese or overweight. Can attribute that to a change in patterns of food consumption. Acknowledging his own addiction to bread, the minister said he has lost 29 pounds to be an example for the nation's youth. The General Synod of the Anglican Church has given its approval for women to be ordained as bishops in the Church of England, a move that will open the way for the first appointments of female bishops early in 2015. In a ceremony at the Anglican Church's house in London, Synod members voted by majority show of hands in favor of amending canon law to allow women to be consecrated as bishops. Their vote completed the process begun last July, when the Synod, which was meeting in the northern English city of York, approved the measure, which subsequently had to be sent to Parliament and the Queen, who was the Church's titular head, for their approval. The door is now open 20 years after first women priests were ordained in England for female bishops to be appointed beginning in January 2015, when vacancies are due to rise in some dioceses. A previous attempt to consecrate women bishops had been rejected in November 2012 by the General Synod 
after months of acrimonious disagreement between conservative and reformist currents in the church. Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Selby will be facing challenges to the unity of all branches of the Anglican Church. A total of 29 women bishops have been, orda have been ordained in Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and the United States. We are 15 states with a common goal, a unified purpose to face the world, in which in lies empowering people, creating a strong economic region. No matter where you're from, no hassle, just freedom. Whether business school or pleasure, we will benefit together. The carry come single market, good for you and me. The carry come single market, good for you and me. And just before a go recap of our headlines, Britain says international mediation and Guyana's political impasse are last resort. Bulgarians suspected of money laundering and who traveled to Jamaica held in Guyana with a huge chunk of cash. Obesity high among Trinidad and Tobago primary schools. And we also heard that a Church of England, that's the Anglican Church, will be consecrating female bishops from as early as next January. Thank you for joining us. You can visit us on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash carab news desk or on our website at carabnewsdesk.com. We're also on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash demwaves. Until our next edition of Caribbean News Desk, so long. I'm Dennis Chabrol. Yeah.